<laughs> so uh, you've been watching the press conference, the NASA press conference. I have been, yes. Um, what was the occasion of the conference before we say what they said? So there's a paper that's published in Science Magazine. Uh, the paper's been under embargo, which means that journalists could not talk about it until the journal breaks, opens the embargo, and allows the information to become public. Had, had so, you seen? Did you, um, were you in on the... Uh... I was not in on the paper. I did not have access to the paper ahead of time, but um, I looked at the people that they had on the panel and did some research into what each of the the different uh, people involved were working on. And the Felisa Wolf Simon is the person who had the most interesting stuff online. And uh, I put on my blog something I stole from her blog that basically she, back in February, she hinted at some, some exciting news that she really wanted to talk about, but she couldn't talk about yet. And it had implications for, for life, um, life in, in a different confirmation. And she's been working on this idea with Professor Paul Davies of a shadow biosphere, which would suggest that there might be life all around us that we have, that we just aren't discovering wow. yet because we haven't been looking for it correctly. Um, and so this press conference this morning, um, that NASA, NASA opened it up. Felisa Wolf Simon uh, took the lead. She led the Where team. Where was the press conference? Um, at NASA, I don't know. I don't know which, okay. which. Uh, oh, Ames Research Center. Yeah, just down the road. Yeah. In uh, Ames. Silicon Valley. Yeah. Yep, just down the road. So it's our neighbor. Yeah. It's exciting. Um, so the news from the press conference is that the the team has discovered a different form of life. Now, they, when you hear NASA, you think that they must be talking about. Um, in the universe, but they're talking about on planet Earth. On planet Earth in Mono Lake. In Mono Lake, no <laughs> <Yes>. less. <laughs> yeah. Far from... Why is NASA even involved in this? Um, NASA has a long history of supporting research that uh, is, is astrobiological in nature. So we can't go other places in the universe as easily to look for different life forms, but we can use our own planet and those extreme environments on our planet to search for other possibilities for life. And if we find those other possibilities, it's just that much more evidence that there will be other forms of life found in different places in the universe. Now, when you say another form of life, do you mean another species? This is more than just a different species. This is more than just a different species. So all life on Earth, if you've taken biology, all life on Earth is based on six basic elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Okay? I usually leave out phosphorus and sulfur and just think of C-H-O-N. Right. Yeah. But or, you have to be But you can complete. think of chnops if you want. Right. Chnops. <laughs> chnops. Almost as good as chone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, uh, the, those are the basic elements, but there are other elements. If you look at the periodic table, um, in the rows of the periodic table, above and below certain elements... Other elements are very chemically similar. And so what the shadow biosphere is based on is this chemical similarity of elements. And so Felicia led this team hypothesizing that you could take, that, that an organism could take an element like arsenic, which is very chemically similar to it, however, very toxic, and substitute it for phosphorus. She went, they went to Mono Lake. They dug the mud out of the lake. They brought mud back to the lab, and they uh, they put uh, put it in a condition where there was lacking phosphorus, and it was high in arsenic, and nothing should have grown. Nothing should have grown at all. But, but they found microbes, hmm. and then they started looking at those microbes, and they found a uh, very high arsenic concentration in the cells, and they found that arsenic associated with a band of genomic DNA. And the arsenic in the cells was behaving by phosphorus. They haven't... Um, interesting. It's so very it, interesting. But it's an evolutionary adaptation, probably not an alien life form. It's not something that came from an asteroid or something. It's probably not something that came from an asteroid. It's probably something that just evolved here on Earth. Right. It's just a different conformation. They're like building blocks. These elements can work together based on their chemistry. And there's no reason that in a particular environment... We couldn't see a substitution. Makes sense. We just still haven't a carbon, looked for it. Still a carbon-based life form. Yes. To still, use the Star Trek phrase. Absolutely. Carbon-based life form. Okay. <laughs> still but organic. Just, but just able to use elements that we previously thought were not used in. Exactly. Because arsenic is toxic. It right. kills cells. Right. But these cells are thriving in it. Um, so what they think, phosphorus, uh, they, they exists in DNA. If you look at DNA, phosphorus makes up what's hmm. called the backbone of the DNA. Hmm. 
they haven't confirmed it yet, but they think that if they, when they look at it, they're going to find arsenic in place of that phosphorus, making up the backbone of DNA. Oh, how in, wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, so that's what they think they're going to find. The the quote from uh, from Felisa, she said that this has cracked open the door for life, doing something different elsewhere right. in the universe. Right. So, so if that's we look, NASA's interest. What, yeah, yeah. What else might we find? How might we look for life elsewhere? This is not extraterrestrial life from someplace else. This is just really cool, different life that's here on our very own planet that opens up the possibilities for right. life even even further. Not a surprise, really, that things are more complex. We never, <laughs> we haven't been very good at tapping the, the complexities of the world. Thank you, no. Dr. Kiki. You're welcome. How exciting. Yeah, I was really excited. They saved their press conference for Science Thursday. Yeah, know? I'm glad you're here. Thank goodness. Someday yeah. we'll have a science officer all the time on deck, but uh, right on now deck. it's only on Thursday. Coming up uh, this Thanks. afternoon, Dr. Kiki's Science Hour. Who's your guest? My guest is Sandra Agulon, and we're going to be talking about the stars in our brains, astrocytes. I don't even know what that is, but I'm sure I'll find out. They're very interesting this afternoon. Cells. I look forward yeah. to that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Dr. Kiki, yeah. Kirsten Sanford, This Week in Science also, uh, when do you, what day do you do that? Because I'm not here when you Thursdays. do it. Thursdays. You do it today. You did it this morning. I do it in the evenings. You do it late. Late, okay. 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Cool. You and uh, yes. your partner, Justin, Justin do that. Yeah, That's and so awesome. we'll probably, we might be talking about this a bit more. I bet you will. Yeah, <laughs> this is big news for This Week in Science. Cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Right, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to bring the NASA news to bear here yeah, on Twitter. As soon too. as it happened. Breaking news. Breaking news. Yeah, thanks, for, thanks for giving me the time, Paul. And now we resume Windows <laughs> Weekly already in progress. Paul did actually half an hour of the show already. <laughs> I know.